you'd ever think about being MVP? Uh, investigate 9-11. Uh, 9-11 was perpetrated by people within our own government. And again, that simple statement, and then they're freaking out in their response all over the news last night and today. This is all over every news channel causing a giant debate. It shows that, number one, their fake security is a complete fraud with the gunships and the groping and the checkpoints. Governor, great to have you back with us. Thanks, Alex. Great to be here. Geez, I, I watched the Super Bowl from off the grid. I was able to watch the game yesterday, and uh, unfortunately, I went back home, and I didn't see the MVP presentation. By the way, just for my note, who did win the MVP? Uh, who did win the Vin, uh, MVP? That was Malcolm Smith of the Seahawks. Really? Okay. Well, any, well, I knew someone from the Seahawks would win because they obviously dominated the game and overwhelmingly won it. They did a great job for Seattle. But, uh, I, I, yeah, that's amazing that somehow somebody got that in there, and that's been all over the news today. That's wonderful. I couldn't be happier. Uh, I tip my hat to that gentleman that had the courage to do that and get people talking and thinking about stuff and getting the lemmings to wake up up there. Well, it shows, Governor, as you know, the power of the individual. As somebody who called national NFL games on, on uh, television and also uh, there locally for the fans, uh, what was it like for you to watch this? I think this was one of the most boring Super Bowls ever. And then watching the TSA grope people, uh, and, and, and and the gunships and the snipers. This did not look like America. It looked like East Germany and Checkpoint Charlie. Well, that's why I do my show. Uh, you know, it's the fact that uh, I'm outside the grid. I'm outside the United States broadcasting in because the United States is getting like East Berlin. They're taking away our rights and freedoms. People need to understand that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are there to protect the people against the government. Those are our documents that ensure our freedom. And when the government starts to violate those documents, we can't allow that to happen. It's that simple because that's what makes our country the great nation that it is. And uh, for this guy to penetrate the Super Bowl and be able to stay on national TV, 9-11 was an inside job, and now they're all up and outraged and irate. It'll, it'll be interesting to see what the end result of this and the backlash of this is. Will Will people become more aware? Or, or, but, you know, they're going to try to marginalize this guy and say that he's some sort of nutcase, naturally. Well, if you go up to Google and put in 9-11 Inside Job and click news, there are literally thousands of articles all over the world, TV. They are taking what he did, kind of like when I got on Piers Morgan, and just putting it everywhere. Those 15 seconds uh, literally just showed what a fraud the whole thing is. What is your angle on the fact that, I mean, I think it shows that it's total security theater, that this guy was able to do that. Well, it, it shows how vulnerable everything is, though, too, Alex, because you think at the Super Bowl, you know, that would be a lockdown situation. How protected was the Super Bowl yesterday? They really had helicopters flying around, and was it, was it truly that difficult to get in? Would you have to go through three metal detectors? Let me break it that? down. Uh, Jakari Jackson, our reporter, along with our camera guy, who had to leave their cameras behind, obviously, that were there for three days before and during covering it. And, and I had to buy them, by the time we got tickets, $1,700 for nosebleeds almost at the very back of that giant stadium. They do not allow cabs to get within a mile of it. They do not allow taxis. They do not allow limos. You have to get on a train and wait two hours each time on, on trains. People collapsed inside the train sitting there for hours in the heat because they had heaters on. That was on the, um, in the news. They would then bus you, and it would then take another two hours after the train gets there to go through security where they search your bags, grope your body, metal detector you, and then do it again, and then do it again, as you just said. But then no one ever scanned or checked their ticket, ever. Uh, not even getting on the train. It was ultra bizarre. Jakari was like, well, wait a minute, there was all this security, but there was no security, and there were men with machine guns everywhere, police dogs, snipers, gunboats, uh, five helicopters, uh, jets flying over that weren't you even, know, yeah. You know, Alex, the question needs to be asked this, and this is what I believe the people need to be asking the government, is why, if we're indeed that vulnerable and we're really that much under attack that the United States is now turning into East Berlin with its security precautions, we need to ask the, 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 the million-dollar question, why? What have we done?
done, and I'll repeat that, what have we done to incur the anger of people throughout the world to this extent? Because that's what we need to be looking at. What is causing people to hate the United States to the extent that they are? We used to be looked up to. Everywhere in the world used to look up and try to emulate the United States of America. They all wanted to be us. You know, they all wanted that. But today, there's nobody doing that anymore. And if we have to lock down our country for fear of attack from some unknown entities, well, then we need to start looking in the mirror saying, what are we doing that is causing this type of behavior throughout the world? Because, you know, we certainly didn't have to protect our Super Bowls 20 years ago like this. I mean, naturally, there's always been some type of security at every event. But as you stated, the security was to make sure people had tickets, you know, because it used to be you had to worry about scalpers and people sneaking in. Well, and, 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 and you had real police out there who, who knew what to look for. It, you know what it is, Governor. It's about training us to be slaves, training us for the police state, training us for a lockdown America during a financial collapse. Why do you think... They're setting up what I would call classical incremental martial law. What do you think it's in preparation for, Jesse Ventura? Well, it, it, it troubles me greatly because obviously somebody feels there's going to be a need for martial law. That's right. And I can't for the life of me figure out if our society is what we deem it to be, why there would ever be a need for martial law. What in the United States of America? You know, people need to wake up and realize that they have, a, each in, uh, of us as individuals, have about as much chance of being attacked by a terrorist as we do winning the Powerball. And yet, we're preparing like some sort of Al-Qaeda invasion of Normandy is going to happen at Virginia Beach, Virginia. And it's, it's insane. And I, I have to agree with you, Alex. The people in the know must be preparing for something that they sure don't want us to know about because this lockdown of America over 9-11 over and over the Patriot Act is utterly absurd. It's time to get rid of the Patriot Act and take the country back to what it used to be instead of this police state they're turning it into. My issue is, is they just keep accelerating it to where more and more it sounds like a good idea to leave the country like you've done. Uh, shifting gears, I believe, as you've said, getting off the grid, becoming self-sufficient, uh, that's how you make sure you can't be domesticated. This system wants you on food stamps. It wants you dependent. It wants you scared, not having your own guns, with police all around with guns. They want us domesticated. So I want to spend a few minutes before we get back into the news and this latest overdose and the heroin out of Afghanistan. I want to ask Governor Jesse Ventura, because I had a lot of fun being on your show last week, uh, uncensored, uh, and it was just great. I was on Skype. You were on Skype. Felt like I was there in the room with you. Uh, spend a few minutes talking about some of the uh, uh, the shows you're doing. In, uh, I mean, you're doing them, what, four days a week at least, and some of the stuff that's coming up because, I mean, this is the type of show that I personally am going to be watching. Well, it's, it's fun for me, Alex, because as you know, since I left office, I've had a very difficult time getting my message out there. Uh, you stated earlier Fox News won't have me on, MSNBC won't have me on. CNN allows me on a little bit. My last book, because it dealt with the Kennedy killing, none of the major networks would have me on, not NBC, not ABC, not CBS, Fox, none of them. And I've always, since I got out of office in two, uh, 2003, when I had that uh, debacle that happened at NS MSNBC where they wouldn't put me on the air because I opposed the war in Iraq, and they paid me for three years and literally handcuffed me and kept me off the air. Since then, I've been fighting to find a way how can I talk to the American people unfiltered? How can I talk to the American people without it being on these stations that decide whether I can come on or not? And uh, Aura.com has come forward, and it actually happened while I was on a book tour. I did Larry King, and I thought Larry had retired. You know, I thought Larry left CNN. I didn't know that he was on the Internet. And I said, Larry, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm on the Internet. You need to be on this. And that's how it all started. Aura TV does Larry King, and they got interested then in me, and they felt I was a voice that needed to be heard. And the important thing is the owner of the company is not from the United States of America, so therefore he has no dog in the fight when I want to criticize our policy and be a, 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 an engaged American 
citizen and be vigilant, a uh, term that I've been using from the start that I like to assume President Obama stole from me for the uh, State of the Union address, because lo and behold, he also used the term vigilant. And uh, this show has offered me that ability and to be able to, and I thought to myself, you know, I've been inside the United States yelling and screaming from the inside out, and nobody seems to want to listen. Maybe it'll work better from the outside going in. So that's what it's done for me doing this show. I can't tell you how happy I am, uncensored, any topics I want to talk about. And, of course, it's on the Internet, so shows are roughly only 8 to 12 minutes long because that's the style of the Internet. They're more quick hits. You're not going to have an hour, hour and a half long show that's going to work that well, I don't think. So it works out terrific for me, and it lets me live in sheer freedom down here. And we'll be moving it about to the show, Alex. We don't want them to get a pinpoint on us. We don't want them finding us with drones. So we'll be doing the show from <laughs> different locations off the grid. We'll keep them guessing. Well, it's just really exciting, the revolution of true independent media. Larry King, when they kicked him off three years ago, had 2 million listeners, viewers a night. Piers Morgan, and I know you know him, he has you on. You know, it's down to about 400,000. MSNBC has gone from a million down to about 300,000. I mean, back when you were on MSNBC, they had 5 million viewers, 10 million viewers some nights. Mainstream media isn't just dying because of the Internet, uh, because my show is just exploding, and many others are. It's the content. But they're still, I mean, Larry King wasn't controllable enough for them, so they got him off CNN. And it just shows, what do you, Jesse Ventura, you're a smart guy, you're savvy. Where do you see the media wars going? Where do you see the establishment going? Where do you see uh, just, you know, all the new banker bailouts, all the corruption? What is your gut about uh, where the future of humanity is going? Well, you know, to me, when you're talking communications, it's the Internet. I mean, I, you know, it's taking over so strong now. Uh, that's why I'm on it, uh, the freedom of being on it. And you can rest assured the government is going to try to get control of it. They've got to from their perspective. If they're going to control us, they got to control the Internet. I personally hope they never, ever get control of it. I love the freedom of it. It falls right under freedom of speech, our First Amendment and the Bill of Rights. We have the right to speak freely. And, for, and the Bill of Rights, freedom of speech, as I've said so often, it's there to protect unpopular speech. Because popular speech doesn't need protecting. It's unpopular speech that needs protecting. That's right. Or, or speech that goes against the status quo. It may be minority speech you're talking about here. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Something that the majority doesn't necessarily can control. And that's what's important about the Internet. Well, that's right. So, uh, Alex, I think the Internet, and I'm probably being very liberal here, I see the Internet taking over all communications within a decade. Oh, I agree. Totally. No, I, I think you're right. Maybe maybe five, six years. I mean, the way it's going. But cybersecurity, homeland security, they admit with big media, they want to censor it, track it, tax it, web ID it, uh, and geolocate it, uh, geofilter it so that they can kill uh, competition because these guys can't compete with us, Governor. Well, you know, and that may be the case. It's like the old saying from Deep Throat, Alex, follow the money. Uh, the money will lead you. You know, that's, money is what gets government to react. Money, money, money. If there's money to be made, government wants a piece of it. Uh, on another note, uh, we'll switch gears here. Again, I want to talk about, you know, and, and we, this makes a good transition to the war on drugs that you wanted to talk about. I'm so proud of the states of Washington and Colorado, the two Super Bowl participants, but I'm even more proud of them, not for their Super Bowl football teams. I'm proud of them because they have voted the people in those states to legalize marijuana and strike a blow against this war on drugs that in a free society should never be happening. Uh, Drug addiction should be treated medically. Addiction should be treated medically, not criminally. Uh, you can be addicted to anything. People, imagine how, the addiction to coffee. Now, and that's a powerful addiction. I remember when I was in the Navy. If you didn't make the coffee, the chiefs were ready to hang you from the yard arm. <laughs> you know? And I never drink coffee. I've never been a coffee addict. But when you watch people not get their morning cup of coffee... 
and you watch how it affects them in their daily life, clearly it's a powerful addiction. Well, again, addiction, you can be addicted to Hostess Twinkies, for that matter. Exactly. You're not going to arrest people for sugar, though now Bloomberg, the outgoing mayor, wants that. Let me shift gears before we get into the drugs, sure. because I want to tie it in. We're about to go to break. I'm going to come back and talk about the dead actor who I was a fan of. He was a great actor, and this super heroine that killed him and tie it in you know, to how the drugs are being shipped in from Afghanistan to get your take on that. But since you mentioned censorship of journalism and the Internet, as you know, we'll put the L.A. Times article on screen. Uh, Los Angeles Times, who's a journalist? Senator Dianne Feinstein wants to draw a line and literally shut down bloggers, talk radio, you name it, and not let us have journalistic protections. Uh, she's absolutely a monster. And you've got John D. Rockefeller, uh, the senator uh, from West Virginia, saying, quote, we'd be better off if the Internet was never invented. So I agree with you. And I remember calling you the night and calling Tyrell the night i never done this on the TV show, even though I was involved in, like, at that time, like, 10 episodes of the, of the 16 or so that had been on. And I'll never forget calling you as a consultant and saying, Governor, I just want to say congratulations for putting the most powerful television on ever. Your FEMA special exposes the whole takeover plan, the whole plan with the FEMA centers. I cannot believe this got on air with almost 2 million viewers, record views for a new show on, 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 on uh, True TV. Then Congress gets involved, all of it happens, the way you scared that congressman, and they killed it airing again when they normally air it 50 more times, so it's seen by upwards of 50 million people. Most re-airs have a million viewers. Incredible to, 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 to see that that so threatened the establishment that within hours they flipped out. Uh, can you speak to that? Well, it was, uh, I don't know if you want to call it an honor to be... Uh to be taken down on the congressional floor, but that's what actually happened. Congressman Cohn, the guy who co-sponsored the bill to build these FEMA camps, actually chastised me and my show on the floors of Congress. And I, I guess I should take that for a compliment uh, uh, to, to get that far. But you're right. That show never aired again. They then removed it and wouldn't even acknowledge that we did it. They so took it off TiVo. They took it off the, the, the cable servers. Oh, yeah, they did all that. So... People out there that believe that we're not already being operated under a certain censorship are naive and sadly mistaken, and they better wake up to the fact that, you know, even a show like mine, when it comes out and tells the truth on, on a particular subject, if it, if it offends too many of the status quo or the government, they'll step in and do what they did to that show and basically remove it so that more people can't ever see it. But it's still out there. Because the great thing about the Internet today is once it's shown once, it's going to be somewhere. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. See the full interview on our sister channel, The Info Warrior, or become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv and help us take the message of freedom and liberty to the next level. Thanks for watching. Spread this information far and wide, and please subscribe to The Alex Jones Channel.